Hey there, everyone. So I'm putting in something a little different into this course that I'm running here on awareness through movement by Moshe Feldenkrais. But really stepping back, uh, the whole point of reading through that book and doing the commentaries that I've been doing is to present to you the Feldenkrais method, but to present it in this particular light that it is, in fact, not just a movement practice, but a practice that can be an integral part of the practice of cultivating wisdom. Now that phrase, at least in my experience, cultivating wisdom, I associate that with John Verveke, the cognitive scientist, philosopher, and meditation teacher, uh, who is associate professor at the University of Toronto, and who just the other day I had the pleasure and honor of speaking to um, about the work he's doing and about the work that I'm doing. And um, in any case, part of the conversation was just about the Feldenkrais method, how it works. And we ended up talking about a particular awareness through movement lesson, which is called A Plane Divides the Body. So partly because people will probably see our conversation, I thought it would be cool to um, share a recording that I've made of that particular lesson. Uh, I didn't just make it, it's an older recording, but uh, I think it's a pretty good one. And um, if you've never done awareness through movement, um, you might wanna give this a try. Now, I mentioned as I've been explaining and reading through the book, Awareness Through Movement, that there are 12 movement lessons in that book. And in fact, A Plane Divides the Body is not one of those 12 lessons. Uh, Moshe Feldenkrais taught that um, elsewhere. Let's just put it that way. I don't actually know where, when it was taught for the first time. But I think it's a really good example of just the overall practice of awareness through movement. And since John and I talked about it a bit, I thought I would put it out um, again because that video, maybe people saw it, um, but I, I'm putting it here in the same playlist as the other videos um, of reading through the book Awareness Through Movement because if you haven't tried uh, Awareness Through Movement before, going through that book is interesting, but you're, you're also missing something by not having the actual experience. So this is your opportunity. Um, I don't think I need to say anything else at this point about that. Um, I'm just going to play the recording for you. But what I will say, you can see behind me, I have a mat on the floor over there. Um, that's the mat I do uh, that I lie down when I'm, I'm doing awareness through movement. And you just want to have the same kind of setup, a comfortable place to lie on the floor. If you need something behind your head, you could put something behind your head, but you don't want a pillow there. You don't want anything that's going to limit the mobility of your head. You just, if for some reason you lie on your back and you're kind of like that with your head tilted back, you want to get your forehead and your chin more or less uh, parallel, uh, same distance to the ceiling, um, not too far back, too far forward like that. Okay, um, enough of this talking. Um, if you want to try a plane divides the body, go ahead and find a place to lie down and then you can continue the video. Okay, so let's, let's see if movement illuminates this idea. Go ahead and lie on your back for a moment. And just close your eyes. And if I asked you to bring your attention to your center, just notice how you do that. Where do you locate your center? What does it mean? To, what sensation comes with paying attention to the center? And then if you were to move away from your center and feel the left side of yourself, and we could extend that and say the left side of your world, what does that feel like? And then shift your attention to the right side.
And of course, you can do this in relation to the floor, so you feel your right leg on the floor, the right side of your pelvis, right side of your back, sensation of the right side of your neck, and then come back over to the left side, And as you follow your breathing now, just take a couple breaths with your attention to the left side. Feel the quality of your breathing, the place that you feel the air most easily finds room inside you. And then a couple breaths on the right side. Notice if there's some shift in your experience of breathing when you bring your attention over to the other side. And now, where is the place that's not left and not right? So can you begin to imagine a line that divides the world and divides you as well? Maybe it comes down over the top of your head, through the middle of your forehead, and down over your nose, between the nostrils, over the middle of your lips and your chin, and down the center of your throat. And imagine how that line would extend down the middle of your breastbone, <coughs> and then eventually to the bottom of the breastbone and over the softer tissue of your abdomen to your belly button, and continuing down below the belly button and through the center of your pubic bone and down to the floor. And imagine that line continuing on the floor, dividing the space between your two legs. And now please bend your knees and stand your feet. and have your feet more or less shoulder width apart. And think again of this line that divides you. And now can you imagine that if this line was painted on the front of your body, that there could be a plane that would extend upwards from that line to the ceiling and it would divide the whole space of the room left and right. So it's like a pane of glass, perhaps, or something very thin that runs along the line of the place that's not left and not right. And now, can you take your right hand and bring it in front of you, across your body, as if to touch that plane, as if to touch the pain, and just move your hand slowly towards the middle, and then move it through that space. So you cross the midline and come back over. But see if you can sense when's the moment you cross from the right side into the left, and then bring it back. So you're, you don't have an actual physical division there that you can touch, but when do you get the sense that you've crossed the midline? So go back and forth a little bit. Okay, rest your arm on the floor. 
And the next time you bring the right hand up, this time you're going to stay without crossing the line, but it's as if there was this pane of glass now and you'd like to rest your hand on the pane. So bring your right hand away from the floor, feel how eventually you lift the elbow, and you bring the hand somewhere in front of you in such a way that you can imagine you're resting the pad of each of your fingers on this plane and the heel of your palm is also there. So no finger passes through the plane, but every finger touches the plane. And now just a few times put your hand on the floor and then again bring it back up to the plane Rest the hand for a moment on the plane and put the hand back on the floor a number of times. But feel how do you make this movement? How do you direct your hand to the plane? How do you move your elbow, your wrist, your shoulder? And are you certain that you have this even contact of all the fingers on the plane as you do this. Okay. The next time that you bring your hand to the plane, just hold your hand there on the plane, a little in front of your face, and then open your eyes to see Good, and rest your arm on the floor. So when you opened your eyes, did it look like you were on the plane? Did it look like you'd crossed it or you had not quite reached it? So I'm going to mainly work with the eyes closed. But just getting that little peek gives you an idea. So bring your right hand and put it resting on the plane, and it stays on the plane now. And without breaking contact with the plane, will you now please move your hand a little bit forward towards the ceiling and backwards again towards your body. So you're reaching away from yourself. You're not moving down towards your feet. You're moving forward towards the ceiling and backwards towards you. The eyes are now closed. And just feel what adjustments do you have to make as you change the position of your hand and your arm so that all the fingers remain on the plane. The palm remains in contact with the plane. Notice where are you orienting your fingertips as you do this? Are you doing something with your wrist or your elbow? As you reach forward and the arm gets a little straighter, does the elbow move towards the midline or away? Okay. And now reach somewhere where the arm is nearly straight. And now the eyes are still closed. Can you point your index finger and drop it down so it lands exactly in your belly button. And just notice, did you, did you find it? Okay, bring your hand up and put it on the plane. And now with the tip of your thumb, can you lower your hand gently down to touch the tip of your nose? Uh, and bring your hand to the plane and then drop your index finger into the belly button and go between searching for the belly button with your index finger and then with the tip of your thumb searching for the tip of your nose and maybe you even sense that your nose is kind of searching for the finger as it comes close. Good and rest your arm on the floor.
Well, if it's more comfortable, you can rest. You can rest the hand on the front of your body. And then bring your right hand back into contact with the plane now. But this time, you move your hand down in the direction of your feet, staying in contact with the plane, and then up towards your head, maybe even reaching overhead, depending on what's comfortable for you. If you're close to the wall, you might want to come down. But Try this with the eyes closed. And of course, there probably are moments where you will feel that you're no longer on the plane. So as you do the movement, you're constantly trying to sense if you're touching the plane, or you've shifted away, or if you've broken through the plane. And if you sense any of those things, you simply make a small correction until you have more of the sense that you, your hand remains flush with the plane. And just notice, where do you orient your fingertips as you reach down and as you reach up? How does the contact of your upper back change in relation to the floor as you do this? Okay, rest your arm on the floor again. And then once more, bring the hand to the plane, the right hand. And now connecting the two movements you've just done, begin to describe a circle on the plane. So going forward towards the ceiling, and then you go up or you go down. Just notice what direction seemed the most natural to you. And what do you have to do to keep all the fingers on the plane, all parts of the circle? Notice if there's some part of the arc where the arm feels heavier. Can you follow your breath as a way to encourage an even and gradual movement here? Remember, the palm of the hand also is on the plane. So it's if you were sitting at a table and just resting your hand on the table, that's the same contact you're looking for. But we're in a, a different plane that's vertical from the ground to the ceiling, dividing through the middle. So go in one direction with your circle and go in the other direction. And then rest your hand on the floor again. And now compare the sensation in your two hands, in your two arms. And your upper back on the right and the left. Stand your feet, and now before you do this, just imagine it's going to be a, a very different kind of a project. What would be necessary to bring the sole of your right foot into contact with the plane? So maybe just bring the foot to the plane for a moment. Idea being that all of the toes, the heel, touch the plane, and your leg is a lot more weight to bring into the air, so you can put the foot back down. Or if you like, as we did with the hand, you could move the foot to the plane and even through the plane to sense the plane that way, but you're tracking to see if you notice the moment it crosses. But eventually you try to have the sense that you rest the foot directly on the plane. 
And because this is more work, you're always welcome to put the foot back on the ground at any moment. You can also look for the plane by resting the outer edge of your right foot on the floor and sliding along the plane below your pelvis. But even then, can you be clear that you don't pass through the plane, that you stay flush to the plane? Okay. And now, can you find a movement? Again, you rest if you need to. But you have the right foot flush to the plane, and you move the foot through space forward to the ceiling and back down towards the floor. But as you go up to the ceiling, the idea is still that all five toes are flush to the plane. So some of you have extended the leg quite, quite a ways, but are you sure that you could still say that you are more or less on the plane? And if not, how would you need to change something in the ankle or the knee or the hip joint to get that sense that you're still contacting the plane? Okay, go ahead and rest. You can rest with the legs long or you can keep the feet standing. Bend the knees and place the soles of the feet on the floor. Now, as you do movements with the right foot in relation to the plane, it's very important what do you do with the left foot to stabilize yourself against the floor. So have some awareness of the left foot and the left leg as you bring the right foot to the plane again and you move a little up and down and a little forward and back and then as you did with your hand can you connect these points and begin to describe a circle on the plane with the sole of your right foot resting whenever you need to and once again notice which direction did you take your circle what's happening behind your pelvis as you make this movement. Great. Rest your foot on the floor. Now bring the right hand to the plane, the feet standing again, and feel that all five fingers, the palm of the hand, rest on the plane, and now also bring the right foot to the plane. And begin to move the right hand, the right foot a little forward and back towards the ceiling and away. So forward means in relation to you. The ceiling is in front of you. So the hand and the foot move together here. And of course, another option is that with the hand you reach forward as the foot comes back towards the floor, and then as the hand comes back, the foot extends forward. But in all cases, you try to have the sense that all five toes, the pads of all five fingers, are flush to the plane. Okay, take a rest. And then when you're ready, 
again, the right hand, the right foot come to the plane. And then move down, away from your head, and back up. Another option, if any of the movements are difficult or strenuous, is to just imagine. And take a rest whenever you wish, but as you continue, can you now move the hand and the foot towards and away from each other? So they approach each other and then move away. And you might imagine the outer edge of your pinky finger and the outer edge of your big toe coming to touch each other. And then they move away. And they approach. It's like the toe is searching for the finger. The finger is searching for the toe. Feel how you support yourself with your left foot. And then rest. And then, of course, with the foot and with the hand, the left foot standing, you bring the foot and the hand to the plane and make two circles on the plane. And just notice if both of your circles are going in the same direction. Or do you make circles that approach each other and move away? What are all the options you have here? And the circles could be any size, but of course, the constraint that is always there is this idea that we remain with the hand and the foot flush to the plane. You could have one circle that moves faster than the other. Or could you continuously make a circle in one direction with one of the limbs while the other one changed directions? can be confusing. Okay, so take a rest. And if you like, you can lengthen the legs, or you can remain with the feet standing. But what is your sense now of the left and the right? the sensation on the left side of your neck, the right side of your neck, your sense of length all the way down each side of your body from the top of your head down to your heels. Is there some different quality in your face on the left and on the right? In the skull, is there a sense of space that's different? As if there was more oxygen on one side of the brain. Okay, bend your knees and stand your feet again. Now begin to explore the, the 
plane with your left hand. And of course the movements we did were forward and back, up and down. And we connected with a circle. Some of you are passing your hand through the plane. So feel what's your sense of connection to the plane here, just beginning on the left side. There's other movements of the hand that are possible than what we described. There's other details, like if you just brought your hand to one place on the plane, you could do movement with your wrist as if you were waving at someone, right? Without so much, mm -hmm. but, well, you can, people are doing different things with the wrist. What's the movement that doesn't break the plane? Could you wave your hand and then continually wave it, but also move it to other parts of the plane, maybe forward, back, up, or down as you wave. Okay, and rest your arm on the floor. And then bring the left hand back to the plane. And of course, another thing that would not disturb the relationship of the hand to the plane is you could perhaps change the amount of space between your fingers. Could you open and close the space between your fingers? And then as you open and close the space between your fingers, could you move the hand to different parts of the plane as you continually open and close the space between the fingers of your hand? but not breaking the plane, not pulling away from the plane. And explore some circles on the plane, big or small. Go in one direction, go in the other direction. You feel something change in the back of your neck depending on where your arm moves to in space. Okay, rest the arm on the floor. And then bring the sole of the left foot, the pads of the five toes of the left foot to the plane. The right foot standing on the floor. Be a lot more difficult if the right leg stays long. Find the plane and then can you move forward towards the ceiling and back. Where do you support this movement against the floor? And is there a place where maybe your, your leg is able to reach, but as you do so, you feel that you're beginning to peel the foot away from the plane? What do you have to do with your ankle, with your hip joint, to feel that you're no matter what distance, you're still flush to the plane. Okay, take a rest. Just sense what might be different now that you've begun to explore the plane from the left side of the world. Stand your feet, bring the left sole of the foot to the plane. Move the foot towards your face and away. And then
then once you've found that, can you grow the movement into a circle? Feeling how can you use your pelvis to support the weight of the leg? How to use the leverage of the floor? And take the circle in one direction, take the circle in the other direction. And rest whenever feels necessary for your comfort. Notice if you're losing the ground under your right foot as you do this. Can your right foot, your right leg be a pillar to support this? Okay, go ahead and rest. And then stand the feet and bring the left foot, the left hand to the plane. And we don't have to repeat all of the ideas, but you know that you can make explorations in the cardinal directions and making circles. It's the left foot and the left hand together. Just notice how do you coordinate the two limbs Another way of relating the two limbs is it's, it's as, as if you held a stick in between your foot and your hand. So the distance was always the same and you were moving the stick. Or you can move the foot up and the hand down or the foot forward and the hand back. Or you could have the pinky finger of the left hand searching for the edge of the big toe. The big toe searching for the pinky finger. And take a rest. And what's your sense of the center now? So think of that line again that goes down the middle of the forehead, over the nose, the mouth, the chin, the throat, down between the ribs, down your middle, and down between your legs and away. Is that line easier to imagine now? Is it clearer? And what is your sense of finding your center? Maybe in a not so purely physical way now. Is there something new? in that sense. Stand your feet. And please bring your right hand to the plane. And slowly begin to draw a circle on the plane with your right hand. And as you continue to draw that circle, can you bring your left hand also to the plane? So begin to draw two circles, maybe as if you were pedaling the wheels of bicycle or the pedals with your hands. 
and take one hand towards the ceiling while the other comes back could the outer edge of one pinky find the outer edge of the thumb of the other hand so reach one hand directly above the other and look for the contact your eyes are closed and you just feel there it is or perhaps you miss slightly and just have a little process of searching with the edge of one thumb for the edge of the pinky on the other hand and you could take the hands away and apart by taking one down and taking one up above you and then bringing them back looking for the contact and switching taking the other arm up the other arm down and now could you reach both your hands away from your body and then bring the tip of your thumb down to touch your nose as you bring the index finger of the other hand to land in your belly button and take the hands up and do the same but switch hands and not only are you trying to locate these two points but you're trying to make the touch simultaneous So the hand that comes to your face, the edge of the thumb touches the tip of your nose, and then you reach down with the other hand, with the index finger landing in the belly button. So technically, you, you maybe break the plane with the hand that goes down to the belly button. You could reach with the edge of your pinky finger, but I think it's simpler to just point downwards with the index finger. And can you... Breathe easily as you do this. Do you find that your aim gets a little more accurate the more that you do it? Good. Rest your arms on the floor. And then stand your feet. Bring your right hand to the plane again. And now can you bring the sole of your left foot to the plane? And with these two limbs, just begin to explore the plane. What are all the things that you've done? What are all the things you could do? Now you just get to play. You can move in any direction, but you keep with the constraint that you sense that you're on the plane. Maybe the pinky of the right hand finds the edge of the big toe of the left foot. Can you move one limb forward and back towards the ceiling and away while the other limb goes up and down towards your head and towards your feet so that you're moving in two different directions on the plane? Rest if you need to. And of course, you can look for circles, circles that move in the same direction or opposite directions. Okay, and take a rest. And what do you sense on the floor now? after moving in a sort of a diagonal relationship to the plane, but still looking for the center. And when you're ready, you can try the same thing, this time with the left hand and the sole of the right foot. And you're always welcome to work in the imagination, but stand the left foot to support you. A lot more work if you leave the other leg long. You can also 
explore the midline on the floor with the foot if that's simpler. So, but you can think of the foot and the hand in relation to each other in terms of space, but also in terms of timing. Remember all the movements of the wrist and the fingers. Maybe you're a person that knows how to change the space between your toes. How does your back support you against the floor as you make these different movements? What's the quality of your breath? Okay, rest everything. What other things could you do <laughs> relating to the plane? <coughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay. Someone had an idea. So, can you bring the soles of your feet together? So the knees go out to the side. You can leave them resting on the floor. So leave, leave the outer edges of your feet resting on the floor for now, but with a sense that they're on the midline. <coughs> and just, if you bring the, the feet to touch, <coughs> but you imagine that you're right at the midline, can you now just one time lift the front of your foot a little away from the floor and then lift the heel? So you're just rocking. Uh -huh. Just whatever's comfortable. It doesn't have to be a large movement. And then maybe lift one foot off the floor, keeping it flush to the plane. And then put it down and lift the other. And then if you feel comfortable, you can bring both of the feet into the air, flush to the plane. If that's too much, you can keep one on the floor. But could you move the feet separately from each other so it's not they're not always glued together but remember all five toes touching the plane <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> it's not easy at all you might wish to put your arms on the floor to support you maybe just make a couple small movements and then rest good Take a rest. Moving the legs this way is quite a lot of work, but the activity is also just about finding yourself in space and what do you feel as you rest now? Where you have chosen to place your feet or maybe if you've lengthened your legs, how does it feel that your legs relate to the midline? Are they more or less at equal distance from the midline the way you're resting now, or is one leg closer or further away? What do you sense? Okay, stand your feet. And bring the two hands to the plane again and go back to just cycling the hands like bicycle pedals, one going high and the other going low on the plane. And now as you continue this cycling movement, can you slowly lift one foot and bring the sole of the foot to the plane and just touch the plane and then put it back down. But, but can you continue to cycle the hands as you do this? So put the foot on the plane and then put it back down, but don't stop the cycling of the hands. And then maybe try the other foot, just one foot at a time for now. 
Can you change the direction of the hands? And then maybe you can create a pattern where you put first the left foot on the plane and put it down, and then the right foot on the plane and put it down, but all the while the two hands move in a circle on the plane. Now, when it becomes a little much, then you just stop and just rest. It's not so much something to be achieved as it's a game that you're playing to to explore something, to find something out. Okay, take a rest. without thinking very much about it. Just touch the tip of your nose with one finger. Is that simpler now? Try the other hand. Go back to the first hand, use a different finger. And then switch to the other hand, different finger, put it in your belly button. Go back to this game. One hand goes into the belly button, the other one goes to the tip of the nose. But each time you do it, can you use a different finger? And can you sense the approach of the finger with your belly button and with your nose? Good. Okay, take a rest. And in your imagination now, just one more time, paint that line down the middle of your forehead, all the way down the middle. Maybe you imagine a certain texture being painted on you, or a certain color. And now here's a funny question. As you do this, as you paint that line, and if you finish painting it, you can just paint it again. You can make it darker. You can go up and down. But as you paint the midline of your body now, which eye follows the line? You're painting the center, but do you feel that you're tracking the line more with your left eye or with your right eye? Do you have a sense that one eye is dominant as it follows the line? It's like you're looking at the middle, but you're looking at it from the right side, or you're looking at it from the left side. So if you imagine now this was a little ball that was rolling over the middle of the line, can you first follow the ball with one eye? Maybe just notice which eye seems to be the eye that naturally follows the movement, and then after you do it, a couple of times, switch eyes. And follow the movement of the ball rolling up and down the midline with the other eye. Okay, and rest everything. Now please roll to your side and come into sitting. So you're going to sit with the soles of your feet together.
And now, if you go ahead and place the left hand on the floor somewhere to support you, maybe to the side or behind you. And now close your eyes, but bring your right hand into space in front of you on the plane. So left hand is to support your weight wherever you wish and move the right hand on the plane up, down, forward, back, and make circles. And now can you join your right hand on the plane with the sole of either foot? Which one will you lift from the floor and bring to the plane? You have your left hand to support you. And where can you go? How do you support yourself on your pelvis? You can, you can slide your foot on the floor if you like. Okay, and keep going with the right hand, but now whichever foot you are using, switch feet. Again, use the left hand to support you. Maybe you can touch the outside of the pinky, the outside of the big toe. Good. Take a rest. Just stay in sitting. You can lean on both hands or sit in any position. Okay, and then put the right hand on the floor for support. Begin doing movements on the plane with your left hand. And then experiment bringing the sole of one foot or the other to the plane with your left hand. And how do you use the support under your pelvis? How do you use your right hand? Where can you go? Very nice. Okay, go ahead and rest on your back again. Bend your knees and stand your feet. And now, of course, bring the soles of both feet and both hands to the plane. And what will you do now? What could you do? What would you like to do? How many combinations could you find? Resting is always there for you if you need it. But which limbs do you pair together? Which limbs break free and do some individual movement? How do you find support against the floor to create all of these options? Very nice. Okay, rest. And 
One last time. How do you sense the floor? And do you have a clearer sense now of the line that divides left from right, right from left? Compare the sensation on each side of those two of that line. Imagine that same line running down the back of you, down the back of your head, the back of your neck, down your spine, all the way down to the tailbone. And bend your knees, stand your feet. And then go ahead and roll through the plane and come into sitting and then come all the way up but maybe you can still have a sense of taking the middle with you as you come upright onto your feet Just how do you relate to space now, the left and the right? And can you imagine that there is some place that isn't left or right? Where does the left and the right meet in you? What's your sense of internal equilibrium? Are you scattered? Are you centered? Are you somewhere in between? Okay, and take this for a little walk through the room. You ready for the tightrope now? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I actually taught this lesson in a parkour gym. And then um, the instructor got up on, you know, on one of these bars and was walking along the bar and he said that he continued to imagine the midline as he did it. He found it helpful. I mean, here's someone who who can do that stuff anyway, but oh. Might put you a little, a little closer if you decide you want to jump up on a railing somewhere. <laughs> okay.